Yo, what up guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, this is a couple of days too late, but I think it'll be okay. So this is the uh, Update 27 combat preview for ESO. Uh, this is going to be from a perspective, uh, mainly through a PvP aspect. I've played ESO for six years, so I know a thing or two about a thing or two. I'm going to try to be completely unbiased and fair as I possibly can going through this. I haven't read through it personally. I've seen quite a few YouTube videos of people discussing it, but I'm going to try to keep it a little bit shorter than most of their videos. Kind of go over the, the key points and maybe, I don't know, make some suggestions. Alright, so uh, I'll probably read along. It's, it's it's not too bad. Uh, I have everyone present focusing on changes to FH27 as always. Where are the problems? Uh, PTS cycle. Uh, client performances. Continuing audit, uh, item sets. Um, see, the thing is with this. If a lot of people don't play PTS, they're not going to get a firm understanding of the item sets. Uh, I think the idea is to blanket nerf everything, just kind of make everything the same, you know, kind of take out RNG. Um, so to reduce calculations uh, when in combat, which is a good idea. Um, ESO is probably one of the most diverse. Like, there's so many sets, and there's probably over 100 sets in the game. And if you think about that, you, know, you have to calculate the RNG chances of every single set, every single interaction in the game, all the passives. That's just hard to do. I mean, especially, you know, with the, they keep introducing even more sets, more proc sets. So maybe taking like half the sets out or reworking them, make them more baseline, would be a really good idea. Yeah, it's gonna make the the game a little bit more bland, but um, it will it may actually fix a lot of the overperforming issues and also some server performance as well. So I'm I'm assuming that's what that means. Uh, for this round, we're continuing item adjustments starting in 26. Uh, come to expect DLCs. Uh, there will be several new sets to acquire. I mean, it's kind of counterproductive what I just said, but uh, assuming they're going to kind of rework the sets anyway, eventually, uh, this is fine. Uh, we also did some class adjustments for long, from long-standing player requests and outliers. They should have done that during the Great War patch. They have zero class balances. As a reminder, uh, we're currently addressing class abilities on a singular basis, not as a whole package just yet. This means larger class reworks are not in the cards in this update, but other adjustments will be made to help server slash client performance and functionality may be missing various class kits. Uh, assuming this is more or less class identity stuff. Um, I know there's so many sets, there's so many proc sets that you can run most proc sets on any class and they pretty much behave the same. So, um, if I'm reading this correctly, maybe if they do tone down a lot of the sets, because, you know, sometimes I'll be in fights, to be honest with you, I, I can't tell if it's a, a Stam Knight Blade, Stam DK, I mean, all Stam classes seem the same to me. <laughs> so maybe this will um, work a little bit on the, uh, the class identity aspect of it, uh, which would be pretty cool, I think. Um, it's not that Zoss doesn't care, they just... I think, well, I'll get into that later. Uh, performance. Uh, last year, we started the process of adjusting abilities uh, more uh, performant. Okay, I'll we'll there. The following standards you know, eliminate over under performing situations. In uh, update 26, we applied standards in these performances monster helms, arena weapons. Can you throughout process most remaining item sets as an exam performance? Proc chances are being removed and will now apply on specific trigger. This is a great idea. This takes the RNG out of the game, which you can pretty much one-shot a lot of people just by basic RNG. So have something specific to trigger it. Not only will this help, you know, in serial PvP, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, like 40, 50 man zergs. Uh, this will help with the performance as well because it has one condition that it must meet instead of a bunch of random ones it has to calculate. Um, I don't know a lot about programming. I have taken quite a few computer science classes, and I do have an engineering degree, so it's I, I, I know a little bit about when it comes to coding and such, but uh, that should help out a lot, actually. Um, as such, to have the ability to conform to standards, the effect of the prop will be adjusted to be stronger, weaker. Yeah, that, that's just going to take some fine-tuning. And depending on how many guys get on the PTS, will determine how quickly they get this adjusted and fine-tuned. Below are a couple examples. Um, trial by fire. No one uses this set. Uh, it will grant you armor. Okay, so... Yeah, it's just baseline. If you're affected by any of this, you get that. That's good. It's like a good checklist, like true, false, true, false, zero, one stuff. Make it a lot easier to calculate. Um, build inheritance. I don't know what that is. Uh, weapon damage. 
Okay, these tops will be retroactive. We'll need to reform gear. Okay, that's good. Um, classes and skills. Um, each class will be receiving some minor adjustments based on the need for performance adjustments, feedback received, or emergent concerns over the past year. This includes adjustments to active passes in certain cases. Again, you know, wholesale skill line class adjustments, only individual abilities. Okay. Um, so eventually they'll get around to class balances once once I'm assuming they'll work on the sets. And then once all the sets are kind of in a sweet spot, they'll move on to the class changes. So gray grass, currently a skill. That seems very useful. Eh, yeah, I guess. Very niche moments, working some of the skills. That's fine. Uh, good change for vigor. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So I mean, this is kind of basic. Let, let me go back and talk about uh, where was it here? Was it up here? Anyway, it's about. Uh, Listening to player feedback. Let me let me see if I can find it here. Anyway, um, what Zoss really needs to do, Zoss does care about this game, and this is just my suggestion. Let me know if you guys agree. Um, I don't think um, the developers, the PvP devs, whatever. I I, I just don't think they play the game a lot. And not playing the game, and playing the game on a casual level is much different than playing it on a veteran level. Um, my suggestion would be to just hire veteran players to play and give you feedback, or um, bring in some content creation, the content creation positions. You know, um, you know the, the lower end skill spectrum, higher in the skill spectrum in the middle, and just let them provide feedback because those are the players that that know what needs to be changed. I mean, it's hard for the devs, you know, they do their job. I'm sure they can't play this nearly hardly at all. So, um, playing this on casual level is much different than playing this on a top tier level. And balancing all that is, is very difficult. Um, I, I will give Zoss that. They are trying. So, overall, this is pretty good. Um, I just think that Zoss really needs to be listening to player feedback. The more people hop on the PTS, the better. Um, and like I said, uh, a suggestion would be to, you know, really listen to, you know, reach out to uh, certain people and, uh, you know, even my little channel, hell, I'll do it for free. You, you don't have to pay me jack shit. Just like reach out to people and you only know, like, really ask them and brainstorm and number crunch, you know, what, you know, what's going on. Um, and what they think that we need to do a change because the devs can't possibly know everything, you know. So um, we'll check out. Uh, see how this combat preview. Um, let's check out uh, this portion of it to blow. These first quarter game performance previews written by our engineering team. Hire me, Zoss. If you're watching this, hire me. I'll send you my resume. <laughs> uh, and explains the main performance improvements plan for 27. Um, See, that's combat preview. We went over the combat preview, so let's, uh, let's kind of take a look in the more. Uh, yeah, this this would be really good to talk about. Um, hi, friends. We're here to bring you a preview of some of the performance improvements planned. Uh, I, I'll probably reiterate a lot of this, but that's okay. She went over this first and then the combat, but whatever. So, per persistent AoE improvements, uh, area affectabilities uh, that last for long durations. Have the potential to send a large number of messages down to a client over time. Yeah, definitely, because it still has to calculate everything's going on and keeps track of passives and spell abilities. And so um, I'm assuming they're going to say they're going to limit the duration of them. Uh, this is extubated in zones. Yeah, definitely. Where many players are routinely casting and being hit by these types of abilities, spam healing. To mitigate this, we have implemented new AOE tech uh, on the server that will keep the same functionality but significantly reduce the number of hit results messages the client has to process. Um, this is just dev talk for uh, refreshing the uh, what's it called? Shit. Um, essentially it's going it's to take data less often for AOE, AOE abilities. Long story short. 
Um, internal testing has been a positive, showing a reduction in latency. That's good. Uh, we're taking a uh, cautious approach to rolling out this new technology, uh, focusing to solely on Dragonite standard and morphs. Uh, we'll evaluate the performance. Yeah, this does last forever, literally, with uh, Elfbane. <laughs> So yeah, uh, AoEs, I can see it really clogging up the uh, the bandwidth and shield the server communication. Um, you know, keep in mind, guys, it's not just an AoE toss down. It has to keep that rendered. It has to take into account what's around it. The dude's passive is going on. It's got to calculate what's happening in that dude. I mean, there's so many sets in the game. There's so many passives. That that's a lot to calculate in the one. So uh, I, I can see where this would be a really good place to start. It's good for them. No in addition to persistent AOE improvements, uh, the team will also be conducting a series of tests on the live servers in the next few weeks. Uh, these tests will be sent around AOEs and Serial will allow us to gather more uh, metrics and real world scenarios. Expect more information. They need to. Yeah, so so, so yeah, this is where the number crunching comes in. That's fine. Uh, yeah, there's stats and statistics. Uh, that's just kind of what they need to do behind the scenes. Not necessarily player base, but just playing the game like the devs kind of. Get their stats and stuff. That's good. Um, I'm set abilities. This team doing hard work auditing and streamlining each set, uh, focusing on new performances, reduce calculation server load. We kind of went over this. Just kind of baseline proc sets. Take the RNG chance out of it, so there's less to calculate. That's good. That's fine. Uh, may even fix a lot of the balancing issues as well. Critical memory situations. All right. So this is. I'm assuming this will be some dev talk. Uh, we know how frustrating it is to teleport in a busy city and encounter a crash. Uh, while we have significantly reduced the number of out of memory crash updates, it's still something that can happen to our players. To prevent these crashes, the console versions now take the game is about to run out of memory. They're reading temporary unloading, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we'll be voting upon this. Uh, one, this doesn't, I mean, this doesn't bother me too much. If I rubber band or crash, I mean, it's, yeah, it's whatever. In Cyrodiil, it's kind of annoying. Um, I'm assuming this will transfer over into Cyrodiil. Uh, I guess we could change that. It's not too annoying. I just, I guess crashing can be kind of annoying. I, I don't crash a lot. I don't know if I just get lucky or have a decent PC, but uh, I rarely crash, to be honest. Of course, I'm rarely in a huge ass Zerg either, so um, I can't really speak too much on this. Maybe you guys can down in the comments. Uh, physics implementation. Okay, um, our Havoc system engine implementations, specifically dealing with key pieces in Cyrodiil, has some issues over the years. Took some time to clean up the code. Yeah, it's, it's just putting in invisible barriers and whatever. Uh, reducing unnecessary complexities, making key pieces behave more like normal fixtures. Essentially, uh, we look at behaviors they do now while working on this. I'll be tracked in a Lucid bug where some physics objects were not being cleaned up properly. This issue was not specified in any zone. Result in the client crash when it occurred. The end result of the physics hard the end result of the physics hardening should be fewer bugs and crashes. Okay, so the destructible environments seem to be causing an issue. They're they're just gonna fix that. Um to be honest, I when this game first came out, the destructive environment was pretty cool, you know, keeps and such, but Kind of outlived its purpose. I mean, how often do you ever see someone break a wall down so we go through the front door? Um, this, if this helps them, do whatever you gotta do. Uh, we don't really give a shit about the keeps, to be honest. So, do what you gotta do there. Trial performance. Uh, our metrics have shown that the trial performance on the server has not been a consistent experience. Yeah, no shit. We were able to track down the root cause of this instance launchers running multiple trials simultaneously would routinely perform okay I've had this happen um, you'll alt F4 out of the game or try to close it uh, you'll even try to uh, control alt delete and it'll still say yes it was running and it'll still be using up some of your GPU and um, I've had this happen off and off and probably every other time I log out of ESO it's still running somehow in the background I'm not sure what kind of problems this causes for Zoss or whatever, but uh, yeah, I didn't know that was going to be uh, a huge issue, but I guess it is. We've taken a pass in the algorithm which determined how trial instances distributed now, factoring this into account, good. This will decrease the chance of our instance launchers being overloaded. Okay. Yeah, so essentially there's two or three launchers open. I mean, they're not there in your computer, but still in, in their database somewhere, it's maintaining them open, which 
causing crashes. I mean, that's that's good. I know it was a big issue, but I guess it was. Uh, database improvements. Made some uh, back-end changes to incorporate an in-memory database cache in our server processor, which will reduce the amount of con contention on our product production databases when under stress. This is dev talk. Uh, update 27. We we're saying the foundation of focusing the small pieces, small piece of the activity finder tool, which should result in smoother processing overall. Once we evaluate our live servers, we'll be create opportunities in future updates and more functionality line perform more so essentially they're just rebuilding their system like they're um, kind of like uh, the way overwatch was uh, overwatch I, I forget what two systems they use but uh, halfway through uh, I think year two or I, I can't remember the exact year but they said you know what fuck it you have to uninstall the game we're completely reworking the engine this engine is going to work better they put in a new engine whatever uh, that's what Blizzard did. Whether or not Zoth, you know, Bethesda, or whatever, has the resources to do that, who knows? Um, probably not. Probably not the path to take. If they think they can patchwork and fix what they have, then that's fine too. I mean, they're not a company like Blizzard is, you know, filthy rich. They 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 can't just stop their game for any amount of times and dedicate resources to this, which they just they just don't have. Um, intermittent load screens. Uh, source of frustration, rain Tamriel. Yeah, yeah, this is kind of annoying every now and then. We identified two areas this behavior could occur, and the first issue is a bug with streaming of scaled assets that are switching between LOD modes and main mod models. Uh, I don't know what LOD means. Who knows? Uh, this should go to live servers. I mean, 26 in incremental. Second issue is regarding a bug that could cause the game to have much bigger physics streaming radius uh, when a high view distance is selected, resulting in more loads than necessary. Yeah, this will fix okay. Cool, cool. Uh, we know this won't solve every issue that our player is experiencing. There's so much work to be done. But we're working diligently to provide you the best experience possible. Be on the lookout for some experimental changes here over the course of 27. Details will come in future update. Thank you. Not gonna lie, I just say fuck it with Serial. Just bring a whole new battleground, a whole new area to fight in. I mean, I'm not sure what kind of resources I would have, but you know, fuck the whole destructive environment. You know, whatever, just, just whatever. Um, people can still stay in Serial. That's cool. That would leave some that server congestion. That'd be all right. But no, I do think going forward, they 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 definitely need to listen more to players who play this. A lot. I mean, a lot, a lot. You know, I've been around for six years. I'm just, I'm just saying that because I'm biased. It's just, um, I think that you should listen to your veteran players, and then it's kind of like a trickle down economics. You, you, you fix the high end issues, and by fixing those, you kind of alleviate some of the stress down below that, and then now you can go into the above average, whatever players fix those and then eventually it'll just trickle down and fix the rest of the issues that you're having. Um, but of course the big deal is server issues and whatever they gotta do to make it better just, just do it. <laughs> doesn't matter if it sets, doesn't matter if you're fucking with Cyrodiil or whatever. Do whatever they gotta do. No one's gonna stop playing the game I don't think just because they, they remove someone's favorite set. Uh, I'm not gonna go in the comments or whatever. Um, is that pretty much, uh, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to go over. I don't think there's anything else that really needs to be said. Like I said, the, the combat preview, just listen to your player base, hire some people that play the game pretty regularly, content creators, and let them test it, you know, let them draw an audience, you know, more people you have on the PTS, the better. Um, I really don't think I missed too many things. Um, they're on the right track. I mean, when I was reading this, I, I didn't expect them to be this proactive, but they're actually going for the end game of the game, not just in the moment, which is really, really good. And even if the DLCs that come out need to suffer, that's fine too. I understand they, they need money and you need food for your company, but uh, if they want lack on the DLCs going forward, as long as they can fix the server issues and performance maintenance, by all means... I mean, that's might hit you hard now, but in the long run, your game it will survive a lot longer. 
you know, as I told my streams, you know, whatever, like, I rather have a game that runs really well than looks super nice. You know, I, I definitely prefer you know, quality gameplay over, you know, what the aesthetics of it. Um, you know, that's why Fortnite runs so good all the time. You know, I, I would, I'd be okay with cartoony models like that, or, um, I mean, I understand, you know, ESO is like a, like a very aesthetically immersive game. I, I get that aspect of it, but if it's causing issues, it's just t toned down on it. No one's really going to care. Shit, if it looks like Minecraft, I don't care. That's fine, as long as it runs smooth. <laughs> if my character models are squares, whatever, as long as I make that square look badass, I don't care. I mean, that's just my opinion. Let, let me know what you guys think. But, uh, let me know if I missed anything. I really don't too much. Kind of said what I need to say about it. Kind of short and sweet. Well, not short. Probably been at this for 20 minutes. But, uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. You know, from a veteran PvP, I think they're doing the right thing. Um, fixing issues in Serial will also trickle down to the rest of the game. So, this is definitely a good start. Which was promised. But, uh, with all that being said, guys, this has been Horcrux. Hopefully you guys have a great day. Deuces.